Hi, I'm Jacob Cebulski. Welcome to Rapid Miner Data Mining and Data Visualization. Now, I've done a lot of work here, so I'd better save this work uh, flow or process. Save the process as, uh, let's call it version 2, and we managed to create a model. We created the model and we applied the model. Let's save it. It appeared here. Now I can destroy it, so to speak. The question is, how can we actually tell that this KNN model gives us good results, good predictions? Okay, so uh, one way of looking at it is to look at the past data. Where is the past data? The data which was here. If I hover over that port, I may be able to, if I do right click, I could see examples from the past coming out of the port. This is the data where subrogation flag was given to us. That's the truth. That's what happened to the past examples, the past claims. So if we created a model and if we pass this information back to it, we could see if it actually predicts the same value. If it does, we could check how many of those values are correctly predicted and how many are incorrectly predicted. Okay, so we use the truth, we use the um, attribute values to be used for prediction and then we could compare the truth versus prediction and uh, we'll see the result. So that's what I'm going to do next. So to do that I will not be reading the new data from it, just delete it. Uh, the, the workflow was, the process was saved. So instead I'll split the data uh, here, or actually multiply the data. So let's multiply I'm going to put it in the middle on that line and get it here. And so the way it's going to work is that the data set, all data will be used to create the model and then all data will be labeled again to see um, what's the result. Now let's run it. So now I have similar information. That's our input data. We can close it. That's what we got. Uh, so clearly when we use the data to create the model and then apply the model exactly to the same data, um, we have some errors. So the model does not remember well what it saw during the model building. Uh, it makes mistakes. Um, how many of those mistakes? Well, we should be able to count it somehow, and we are not going to add up 3,037 examples to figure it out. Clearly, uh, tools such as RapidMiner must be able to do it automatically, and so they do. Uh, we look at performance, and it's a performance. We do classification, so that's a classifier. Uh, it's a more specific. The outcome is binary, binomial. So let's look at binomial classification. Uh, what it needs is the labeled attributes and the performance will come out, uh, will not cross the lines, it will just look ugly. I will see all the labeled examples and if I want to see the model I want to have the third one as well. Shift on the keyboard and move the ports around so it looks a little bit better. Now performance operator has a number of um, possibilities. Um, we want to check the accuracy of my prediction, so that's here. There's also something called kappa. Um, I'll tell you that in a minute. What's, there's many more possible ways of assessing the performance of uh, the binomial classifier. and those measurements and statistics you can learn about if you 
and enrolled in a further unit uh, in <coughs> business analytics. So what I did, get the data for training, same data to, for, to, to apply the model, get all the label attributes and let RapidMiner count. Let's run it. The model, boring. This is what we saw before. We want to find the performance vector, the count. Here it is. Uh, what we see is so-called confusion matrix. Um, the confusion matrix, basically, it looks at whether the prediction matches the truth. Uh, so, in the data set, uh, we had 61% of all observations to be labeled as 1. That means subrogation happened. Uh, sorry, got it wrong. Um, I would have to add up 702 and 433 um, with the number of those observations were subrogated was 353 plus 1500 about 1800 were labeled as zero there's no subrogation so 1800 versus 1100 um, they're compared against the prediction subrogation was one versus subrogation was zero which means that they agree on the diagonal 702 was ag in agreement that when prediction was 1, the truth was 1. And here, 1549, the prediction was 0, the truth was 0. The other, the other uh, diagonal, it shows mismatch between our prediction and the truth. So we can see 61% was correct when we wanted to predict uh, subrogation equal 1, and 81 correct when subrogation was zero. Overall, if you add up 702 plus 1549 and divide it by the total number of all observations, the accuracy is 74%. So, from the point of view of the company, uh, if we could predict s nearly 75% of cases ending up in subrogation, um, that's much better than the chance. The chance would be 50% in this case. Um, it means that at 25%, um, if all those cases go to court, and each court case is about $200,000, if I knew ahead of time that I could actually recover the cost, uh, I could save a lot of money. So, I can predict 75% of um, data. Um, there's another statistical kappa. Um, it's very similar to accuracy, except that Kappa knows that um, this particular value of sub sub the subrogation values are not balanced. There's many more, in which case subrogation did not happen than that it did. It's not a huge difference, but there is um, 1800 versus 1100. So, uh, looking at the frequency of the values of um, of what we want to predict. Kappa gives us a more pessimistic outlook. Um, it actually is not a f it's not an accuracy measure, but if you want to improve the model, we want Kappa, Kappa to climb up. The higher the Kappa, the better is your accuracy. Sometimes you'll see here accuracy to be phenomenally high, like 99%. Let's say that uh, we want to predict uh, fraudulent cases, but only 1% of cases were fraudulent. If my model says nothing's fraudulent, I get 99% prediction. But Kappa will say, hang on, uh, your reasoning's wrong, because uh, the, the variable, uh, the classes were unbalanced, and so it's much, much lower. It will actually penalize you severely unless you predict all correct uh, case of fraudulent um, lodgement. There's a problem here. Okay, I'm very happy with that. Um, the problem is that I constructed the model um, using some data and then I used a test the model on the same data. But when uh, I get new cases, uh, the model has never seen them before. So it's not a case of recall how good is the memory of the model. We want the model to predict the cases on new, previously not seen examples. So there's something fishy about that.
So normally this is not how we do it. So let's save it actually and say never do this again. So we apply the model. It's actually we use the model for prediction and this is incorrect. So it's the training data only. Okay. Sometimes we actually do this to see whether the model can recall what it saw before. But it's not good for predicting what's going to happen in the future when we deploy this model uh, in practice and we start actually using it on new cases. Perhaps it will be as good as this, perhaps it will not.